Welcome aboard the train of coding stuff. Uh, here's another coding challenge. What I'm going to do in this coding challenge is show you how to place points, your own geometry, your own designs along the paths of letters um, in JavaScript using the p5.js library with the p5.font object. And then I'm also going to apply something called a steering behavior uh, from Craig Reynolds. There'll be a lot more information in this video's description. And I'm going to use steering behaviors for these objects to find their way to a target as well as flee the mouse. So you can see the sort of inkling of a creative possibility here of what you could make with it. And I'm sure you could come up with more creative designs, reasons for using text, uh, other ways of interacting with other types of sensors and physicality. And so um, enjoy and enjoy this uh, coding challenge. And I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Okay, I'm gonna get started with this coding challenge. The first step that I want to do is draw dots where there is text if that makes sense. So let me, let, me, let, me, let me explain a bit more about what I mean here. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna make a variable called font, and I'm gonna just use preload, because I need, to, I, wanna, uh, I need to specify a specific font here. I'm gonna say font equals load font, and I have already put in the directory for, um, for this project, I have already put a, um, hold on, a font file. <laughs> Show and finder. Um, so there's the font file. So I need this font file's name. So I'm going to copy it, and then I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna put that in here. So now I've loaded that font. I'm going to say create canvas uh, 800 by 300, something arbitrary. I'm going to say uh, text font, font. Then I'm just gonna say text uh, rainbow. Is that too long? I kinda wanna use a short word because I don't wanna have too many dots. I like rainbow. I think I might use train, <laughs> this is a little bit shorter, train bow, so to speak. TM, train bow. Train bow. Um, so text train, and I'm just gonna say 10, uh, 200, and I'm gonna make uh, text size. So these are some functions that are part of the p5.js library that allow me to draw text to the screen. And I'm gonna say 128. And then I think if I say uh, uh, fill 255 and no stroke, that'll color the text white. And if I say background, uh, my favorite background color 51, <laughs> that'll make the background 51. Okay, here we go. There, see, look, now I have the word train right there. So I'm gonna move it over a little bit. Uh, I don't need, probably don't need six, that big of a space. 600 by 300 is good. And let's move it over. You know, I could align it with the center and all that, but I, I, I'm not so worried. I just wanna get the basic idea here. Oh, whoops, so let me refresh that. <laughs> I didn't move it up. And there, there's my sketch, and I'm just gonna like move it over a little bit more. <laughs> okay, there we go. This, does, this part doesn't really matter. So I now have a P5 sketch where I've drawn letters to the canvas. And I, I wanna make it a little bit bigger. I'm, I know I'm being like crazy here, but I'm gonna just say uh, 192, I don't know. Refresh, there we go, ah, now, now this looks right. So I've now got these big letters here. Now what I wanna do is instead of drawing them as actual text, I want to get all of the points of the letters. So from here, there's lots of creative, po creative possibilities. And fonts in P5 are loaded into an object called P5 font. And here, you'll see what are some functions available. There's, on the reference page, there's text bounds. So there are actually some other functions that are available for p5.font that are um, not, uh, in, uh, that you won't see them in the reference, but if you dig through the source code and look at some of the examples, you'll find. And, and it, I guess it's an open question. Maybe you should file an issue and discuss whether some of these functions should actually be in the reference, and maybe it's just a matter of putting in the work and volunteering some time to write reference pages and expand this. But a really useful function, and a lot of this work was done by uh, Daniel Howe, I should credit uh, him for a lot of this work, is to say, I'm gonna say var points equals font text to points. I believe the function is called text to points, and now I can take exactly this. So I'm gonna put that in there, and what that should give me, I believe, let's just console log it. So we can see if this works. Let's just see what does this function give us. So I'm gonna go back here. We can say, look, it's a big array with all these objects. And what's in each of these objects? An alpha and an X and a Y. Well, I didn't even know it had an alpha in there. An alpha and an X and a Y. So I'm just gonna make use of the X and the Y. So what I'm gonna do now, I really soon I'm gonna use a for each loop in one of my videos. Everybody wants me to, but I just like, 
I'm like old fashioned and not very good at programming. So it's just, the, I'm, I'm just using my for loop just for today. Please let me do it just for today. I'll get to that for each loop soon. Okay, so I'm gonna say um, a point equals point index i, and I'm just going to uh, just make something that's uh, green so I see it as a different color, uh, stroke weight four, and I'm gonna draw a point at point dot, ooh, this is bad. Look what I just did. So this is really dangerous in JavaScript. <laughs> so I was like, I'll just make a variable called point because I'm gonna store something called a point. But I have a, a function in P5 that's called point, that draws a point. So I can't make up a variable with the same name as something that I'm using from a library in the global namespace, which is why things are typically in JavaScript libraries, quote unquote, namespace, meaning I would have to say p5.point, but also just makes things so inconvenient, especially for beginners. So here, I'm just gonna say pt for point, and now I'm gonna say pt.x, pt.y. So let's see what I get now. And we can see, look at that. Look at all these nice green points these green circles that are tracing the contour. Now this is amazing because I don't need to draw the text anymore. Right, this whole thing was just to see that that worked. And, oh, by the way, oh, interesting. Oh, it just, it kind of used 192. But I'm gonna put 192 into this function. The fourth argument I think is the font size because what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna completely take this out. The whole point of this was I don't need to draw the text and then I'm gonna make these uh, white and make them a little bit bigger. And we can see there is now the word train with lots of little dots. So what's exciting about this is I have now drawn with my own algorithm the locations of all of these vertices in a piece of text. And so from here, your you know, imagination can go wild. I can make them rainbow colors. I can make them you know, move and follow the paths. I can have them explode and come back and shimmer and change to stars and hearts or whatever you want to do. Like I could make the word love and just fill it with hearts, right? You could do that and that would be nice. So there's a lot of possibilities here. But what I'm going to do next is turn these dots into particles that can move around the screen. And what I'm gonna do is maybe um, start them in a random location and then have them find their spot. And to do this, I'm gonna employ an algorithm known as steering. Now I have a whole set of tutorials that I'll link to this. It's chapter six from Nature of Code book about autonomous agents and Breitenberg vehicles. And there's all this like inspiration and background. But what I'm gonna do is model off of Craig Reynolds steering behaviors. There's a, a well-known paper from 1999, steering behaviors for autonomous characters, something like that. And I'll link to that paper that you can read in this video's description. But what I'm gonna do is just move over to the whiteboard and just talk you through what the basic idea of steering is. If I have a particle and it has a current velocity, it's a particle, it's an, actually I'm gonna call it vehicle because vehicle is a term from a, a famous book called Vehicles, famous book, it's a famous book. Uh, it's a book that I like uh, by Valentino Breitenberg, an Italian neuroscientist. Uh, Valentino Breitenberg, and actually this would be great to have a whole set of coding challenges that are to implement Breitenberg vehicles. I gotta get to that sometime, but Imagine these almost science fiction like robots that had sensors and desires and experienced fear or love and steered around an environment based on those emotions and simple rules. So that's where that's sort of a background where a lot of these ideas come from. But to turn it into some kind of math and code, we, if we have this idea of a vehicle, maybe represented as a triangle, and it has a current velocity, that's its current velocity. What if this vehicle had a desire? It had a desire to do something like get some food or run away from a predator or just like wander around, whatever its desire might be. Could we translate that desire into a vector? So let's say its desire was to find uh, you know, a spot, a target. We could translate, we could, we, if we know its current velocity and then we calculate a desired velocity, move as fast as possible to the target, the steering force as defined by Reynolds equals desired minus velocity. So this is an autonomous agent. It has, this agent has some perception, awareness of its environment. It knows its current velocity. So the steering, the force applied to it to steer isn't directly the desired, it's the error between what it desires to do and its current velocity. And this is, technique allows for a much more kind of lifelike and improvisational quality, again, to quote from Reynolds' paper. 
So, um, and you can imagine how powerful this is. For example, what if, its what if its current velocity was equal to its desired velocity? Then its steering would be zero. It doesn't need to turn, speed up, slow down, any of those things. What if its current velocity was faster than its desired velocity? Then the steering force would actually be a force pointing in the opposite direction, trying to get it to slow down. So the fact of using a force that's the error between what it currently wants to do and its actual current velocity, this is a very powerful concept that's useful in animating motion of autonomous agents. Okay, so now we understand this concept, let's have these agents desire to seek their particular target. So here I am back over here with my train. <laughs> We should edit that part out probably, but I don't know. Maybe we'll just get left in. Who knows? Okay, back to my train. Okay, now back to my train. What am I doing here? Okay, so uh, we have a lot to do all of a sudden. So one thing I need to do, and it would be nice to maybe do some of these challenges not from scratch and just use like a base object that kind of moves around the screen, but I'm just going to create a new file. <laughs> I'm going to call it vehicle.js, and I'm going to write a constructor function to make vehicle objects, and the vehicles they're going to need a position, and that's going to be a vector. Again, if you're interested, you know, a lot of this now I'm going to base off of, you know, sort of knowledge of basic physics engines and vectors, which you can also find in kind of some of my other Nature of Code tutorials. A position, a velocity, and an acceleration. It's also going to need a target. And when I make the vehicle, let's give it an X and a Y and position its target there. Let's also just start it at that x and y. So it's got to have a starting position and a target position. Okay, so now that we have that, and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna attach the functions to the vehicle prototype as opposed to saying this dot because I'm intending to make a video tutorial about what prototype is and why this is a slightly, well, some would say a, a, a not, not so slight, a majorly more, better, mm, mm, correct, efficient, nicer way of attaching functions to objects. So I'm going to say a vehicle prototype update equals function. And I'm, I'm doing this because it commits me to making that tutorial. Um, and I'm going to say uh, this.pause.add, this.velocity, this.velocity.add, this.acceleration. So this is the basic physics idea of acceleration changing velocity, velocity changing position. Then I also need to uh, add a function, which is like show or display to render it. And let's give it a size. This dot r equals eight, for example. And I am going to use whatever I just did right here to, um, we've got a lot of this dots. I'm sure I'm gonna be forgetting stuff. This dot pause dot x and this dot pause dot y. So now I have some vehicles with some basic physics. The position, velocity, acceleration, a target, and uh, some updating of their whatever, and then uh, being able to draw that. So now what I'm gonna do is in the sketch, I'm going to say var vehicles equals empty array. And instead of drawing a points in setup, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say var vehicle equals a new vehicle at point.x, point.y. OK? So now, uh, and then I've got to put that into the array. So vehicles.push vehicle. So I'm I'm making a vehicle ev for every spot in, that, uh, in the points path of the font thingy. Okay, so now these should be trains, really. I mean, come on, right? Choo-choo? <laughs> okay, so now in draw, uh, we'll set the background. The draw is an animation loop that's part of the P5 library. Uh, and I, again, I could use a for each loop, but I'm just going to loop through all of the vehicles. And I'm going to say var, I'm just going to say V just to, Make things sort of shorter for right now. I'm going to say v.update and v.show. So when I run this, this should look exactly the same. It, the first version, I just drew a dot at all the spots. Now I'm actually making an object that has some physics built into it and then showing it, but it, it shouldn't move yet because there's, there's no velocity, there's no forces. So if I hit refresh, ah, okay. So I've got some errors here. Um, Sketch.js, oh, I forgot to reference. Uh, my uh, new vehicle.js file in index.html. So I need to do that. I always forget that. I need a song for like, it's not as catchy as this dot. 
reference the new JavaScript file in index.html? No. Does that be turned into a song? Probably not. Okay. Um, so once I do that, let's see what I've got here. Good. And I'm going to get rid of that console log. That's kind of like filling up my console. I don't really need to see that. Move this over here a little bit. Uh, clear. Okay. Great. So now this is working. We've got those dots there vehicles. Now, just to prove that this is doing something, let's go into vehicles and just say, I don't know, give them p5 dot vector dot random 2D. So I'm going to just give each one a random velocity. So you can see instantly they're all moving. Um, now, how could I have them get back to where they're meant to be? So what I want to do is implement this algorithm now. Each particle, each vehicle should calculate a vector pointing from itself to the target. It should scale it according to a maximum speed it desires to go at maximum speed. And then it should calculate a steering force, desired minus velocity, which it will apply to its acceleration. Okay, so let's do that. So now I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to write a function, uh, prototype dot uh, behaviors equals function. The reason why I'm, I'm kind of anticipating that I might have multiple multiple behaviors that play. So while I could just only write a seek behavior and then I only need one function, I need a function to sort of accumulate a bunch of different behaviors. So what I want to do is I want to say var seek equals um, this dot seek uh, this dot target. And then I want to say this dot apply force seek. Right? So what I want to do is I, I actually, so Apply force is not a function that just magically exists. I need to actually write that function. So each vehicle should also have a function, uh, apply force, which receives an argument. And then it takes uh, this dot acceleration dot add that force. So the idea, if there are going to be multiple forces at play, we can add them all into the acceleration. And if I'm doing that, the acceleration which accumulates all the forces, every single frame of animation needs to start from zero. So one thing I can do is after at the end of update, I can say this dot acceleration dot multiply by zero. So that's going to clear the acceleration. So now I have, uh, and of course if I run this now, I'm missing the seek function. The seek function, I need to actually finally write something with this particular algorithm in it. This is me getting my steps in on my Fitbit. Oh, uh, no buzz marketing of products on this channel. Unless they're sponsoring me, I guess. Uh, redacted product that I'm using. Okay, um, so, uh, da, 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 da. so now I need to write that seek function. Um, Vehicle.prototype.seek. And interestingly enough, um, I gave it an argument called, yeah, it's good to have it have a generic argument. It could seek any target. So how do I get a vector that points from the object location to the thing it's seeking? Okay, so the way that I do that is I say, uh, and I'm going to call this the desired vector, the desired velocity. Desired equals p5 dot vector subtract target minus this dot position. So, and I, I'm, I kind of, some of these lines of code are getting kind of long. So this is the way you get a vector that points from position to target. You subtract the two vectors. Now, what should the magnitude of that be? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a new variable as part of this vehicle, and I'm going to call it max speed. And I'm going to set it to 5. So the idea here is its desired velocity is always its maximum speed it, uh, it is, is, to, is at its maximum speed. So what I'm going to do there, so I'm going to say then desired dot set mag uh, this dot maximum speed. Okay, so now, and then um, I need the steering force. Steer, and what did we say? Steering equals desired minus velocity. This should be easy. Steer equals p5 vector dot subtract desired minus this dot velocity. Return steer. The idea here is that I'm going to calculate that force and return it because when I get it up here, I can then apply it. So let's see how this goes. We should be good. Well, what did I forget? I forgot to actually call apply behaviors. So I'm going to say v dot apply, or I just called it behaviors, behaviors. I could call it steering. I don't know what would make sense to call it. Okay, so now <laughs> look what's happening. 
it's seeking that spot and it's doing it. It's very good at seeking it. So it's like finding it, moving back. So I got this like sort of crazy, like frenetic shaking thing. So one thing I should do, by the way, is introduce another variable, which would be very useful to control the behavior of these vehicles. And this all, again, all comes from Reynolds paper, maximum force. So how strong, how good is it at steering? Like, because right now I'm, I, it's kind of like an idealized vehicle that can steer as well as it ever might need to be. So I'm gonna say like point, 0 0.3 is kind of a magnitude maximum. And then when I calculate that steering force, I'm gonna say steer limit um, this dot maximum force. So what you'll see here is that steering force won't be as strong. And you can see it's you know, still doing the same thing where it seeks the target and then it leaves, but you know, and, but it's not as good. So, um, you know, one thing that we could see to kind of like try to have more of a sense of this, well, here's the thing. This is doing us basically no good right now because what I really want to do to implement this particular idea is I don't want to implement a pure seek algorithm. I want to implement an algorithm that's known from the paper as arrive. And again, everything boils down to desired velocity. And what the arrive behavior says is, please go to the target, but not as fast as possible. You want to go, uh, your speed, your magnitude of your velocity is relative to how far away from the target you are. Meaning, if I'm really far away, I want to go really fast. But if I'm really close, I want to go really slow. And what this will cause is if I'm here and I am going really fast, my steering force will cause me to slow down. And if I'm at the target, I want to be going, my, my desired velocity is zero, the magnitude. So this is going to, instead of having the, the object overshoot it, actually slow down and stop. Okay, so the, here I come back over here and I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to leave seek in there because it could be useful later because I have an idea of what to use it for. And I'm going to just add a function called arrive, which is exactly the same argument. It's actually the same algorithm. The difference is what is the desired magnitude. So I'm going to say um, if desire. So the distance. So the distance is um, the magnitude of this, right? The magnitude of that vector is actually how far away it is, because that's a vector that points all the way from the position to the target. If the distance is less than, I'm going to pick an arbitrary threshold, less than 100 pixels. If the distance is less than 100, then I want a magnitude, magnitude, I'm going to say speed, to be map the distance, which goes from 0 to 100, to what? When the distance is 0, I want the magnitude to be 0. When the distance is 100, I want the magnitude to be maximum speed. So uh, else speed, so I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to say var speed, this, I'm sure there's a more efficient way to write this, equals uh, this dot maximum speed. And then, but if distance is less than 100, then actually set speed to be a different value based on how close it is. And then set the magnitude to this new speed value I've calculated rather. Than, so here's the creative power you have now. You can see I'm doing like a standard seek and a standard arrive. But you might have a behavior that you imagine in your head. What you need to do is think through some logic by which you could convert that behavior into a desired velocity. And it can be much more complex than this. You see just this little increment, incremental change from seek to arrive. Now let's see if this actually works. <laughs> um, I'm going to change. Uh, up here to say uh, arrive equals this dot arrive the target and then apply the arrive behavior. So you can see that this is now kind of working. You know, there's some little like goofiness of maybe there's a little bit noise of it sort of like jiggling, but it looks like they've all settled into a spot. So let's see if this is really working. The way to know if this is really working is I'm not going to start them at their target anymore. I'm going to say random with random height. And now we're going to see them all move into their spot. That's pretty good. Ta-da! So on the one hand, I could consider this finished. There's so many possibilities here. Here's something obviously that would be cool to try. What if you have this then rearrange itself into new text? I'm going to leave that as an exercise for somebody watching. The tricky thing is you might have a different number of particles. So you might need to split some or combine some to get more or few 
more, more or less particles. But let me just do one other thing to it. What if I, just to make this, I mean, there's a bunch of other things I kind of want to do to this, but just to give it something else, what if I were to add a force, um, a steering force where the particles themselves, the vehicles, are afraid of the mouse? So what I want to do is in, I'm actually going to change this seek function to uh, flee. I'm going to call it flee. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply, I'm going to limit it to, I'm going to, um, multiply the steering force by negative one. So the flea algorithm is my desire is to move in the opposite direction <laughs> as fast as possible from the target rather than in the direction. So I can just multiply the force in the opposite direction. Or, you know, I guess technically to do this in the quote unquote correct way, I would, uh, I would multiply it by negative, the desired vector by negative one. So the, I'm not changing the force. Uh, th this way, I think, is more accurately depicting the algorithm for flea by changing the desired vector to point in the opposite direction. Now, in apply behaviors, I could say, where is this? Um, I could say a mouse equals create vector. Now, I don't need to create a vector for every object, but you know, I, uh, I could have a global vector that's the mouse's, global variable that's the mouse's location. Var mouse equals create vector, mouse x, mouse y, and now, I'm going to say var flea equals this dot flea mouse. And I am going to say this dot apply force flea. So now if I run this, you can see like if I just get the mouse way out, they're kind of like in the spot, but like they're really just very, you know, they're never going to find them. They're way too afraid of the mouse. So one thing that I probably should do is have this flea behavior only um, trigger if they're within a certain distance. And maybe even the magnitude is you know, they're based on that distance. But I'm going to do something pretty simple here, which is just, uh, and there's probably a, you know, I, I might want to leave this intact and not mess with this and do this part outside of it. But right here, I'm just going to say, um, uh, you know, I can get that distance right here, var d equals desired dot mag. And I'm just going to say if d is less than uh, 50, and I should make that a variable too, all these things I should make variables, then uh, return that steering force. Otherwise, otherwise just return create vector 0, 0. Now again, there's lots of inefficiencies. Like I don't need, I could have a global variable that's the 0 vector. I don't need to make create vector all over the place, but this will work and demonstrates the idea. So I only want to have that effect trigger if, whoops, what did I miss? Vehicle is uh, uncaught sketch uh, vehicle JS line 63. So oh, I have an extra uh, close bracket. Uh, so here we go. So you can see everything is coming into its spot. And then now as I move here, now I'm not really, you can sort of see here as I move the mouse, I'm kind of messing with these, but very little. So I kind of want this to behave in a bit more of a kind of radical way. And so something I might, a more responsive way, I guess radical, I don't know. I think I might want to give the maximum speed a bit more. And actually, I'm just going to like crank up the maximum force. The other thing I might want to do is write this in a slightly different way where I can now also weight these particular forces. So what if I want arrive to just have a weight of one, but flee to have a weight of five. So I want that fleeing force to be much stronger than the arrival force. So now everything's in their spot, and I move the mouse around. You can see I almost have this like spring-like behavior. I feel like zooming in on this just so you can see it a bit. And actually, maybe it's better for me to, uh, whoops, do this, just to make it bigger so you can see. <laughs> uh, this will be good for a screenshot. Probably if over here or something. So anyway, so you can, I can't believe this in the middle of the video. I was like, let's make the thumbnail. But, um, so you can see here now I've got something uh, where the, the particles kind of arrive to their spot and I can push them around with the mouse. Now ultimately, I might be able to make this even more kind of dynamic or compelling, or I don't know what the word is, but if I have these also respond to each other. So what if I added a group behavior like separation? And I would encourage you to check out, I think I have some videos on group behaviors and flocking systems, and there's lots more that you could add to this. The thing to watch out for there, of course, is once you have every particle checking, every vehicle checking every other vehicle's location, things can really slow down in terms of the amount of computation. So there's strategies there to make that more efficient that I should probably get into at some point. But I think this gives you the basic building blocks. So if I'm going to give you a challenge 
challenge to do after watching this, I would say, number one is, what is your content? Are you designing this with circles? What's your text? Why are you making this? Could you think about multiple pieces of text transforming from, you know, train into rainbow into unicorn? Ta-da! Um, could you apply other behaviors? Path following would be one that's really, could you actually have the, the vehicles follow the paths of the letters? Um, could you add group behaviors? What other types of, you know, uh, reasons, you know, could, you know, what, what is the system you're building? There's so many possibilities in terms of design and color. So I hope you make something from this. Uh, use the code that's linked in the description. Um, I'll try to make a processing version of this. There's a library in processing called Geomerative. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. That allows you to get the path points of text. Um, so that's something that uh, maybe I'll revisit in a future video as well. So thanks for watching this coding challenge. I hope you enjoyed it. And I don't know. Train joke insert here with whistle thing. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Bell.